Now, notice his delegated authority, and I'm reading verse 12. He exerciseth all the authority of the first wild beast in his presence, and he maketh the earth and the dwellers therein to worship the first wild beast whose wound of death was healed. Now, he has a delegated authority from the first wild beast, which actually makes him subservient to him, but he also is on a par with him. He has the same power. Now, he leads in a movement to exterminate the harlot of Revelation 17. That's the false church that will go into the great tribulation. And John doesn't even dignify that church by the name church because it's not a church. The true church left and is called a harlot. The church is called a bride of Christ. And here you have the last vestige of an apostate church with all of its humanism. We'll see that in the 17th chapter. Then the false prophet will offer the world something new to worship. The first wild beast, the willful king, the man of sin, the last world dictator. Now, I'm not going to take time to go to the Scripture references, but those of you that have been with us know that we picked this up back in Daniel 11, chapter, verse 36 and 39, Matthew 24, 24, which I just quoted, and 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 10. Here is presented this terrible second beast that is going to exalt the first beast to the place of worship, whose wound of death was healed. And that reveals that both the first and the second beasts are faith healers and miracle workers. This is the big lie and the strong delusion that's going to come to the world. Now I want to read verses 13 and 14. And he doeth great signs that he should even make fire to come down out of heaven into the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth the dwellers on the earth through the signs which was given him to do in the presence of the wild beasts, saying to the dwellers on the earth that they should make an image. It's an icon. That's the Greek word. An image, an icon to the beast who hath the stroke of the sword and liveth. Now, this false prophet is a worker of signs and miracles. We're told that. Our Lord said that. Our Lord warned against this false prophet. His deception is that he apes Elijah in bringing fire down from heaven. And he's a combination of Jannes and Jambres down in Egypt, we're told. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and sorcerers. Now, the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. In other words, they were good magicians, and I think they had a satanic power then. This one will in the end time. And we read in Matthew 3, 11, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, and this is John the Baptist. But he that cometh after me is mightier than thou, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And you remember John the Baptist had nothing to do with fire. But this false prophet is going to imitate that. But the fire, of course, is actually the Lord Jesus baptizing today with water. But in that day will be fire and that's judgment, of course. Now, the false prophet plays with fire until he's cast into the lake of fire, as we'll see later. Now, the world is taken in by this deception, with the exception, of course, of God's elect, those that are his. They cannot be deceived. Now, the false prophet shows his hand by causing to be made an image of the man of sin. The word for image is icon, which means likeness. The big production is a likeness that emphasizes the wound of death that was healed. It's interesting to note that the Lord Jesus did not permit anything connected with his physical appearance to survive. But the likeness of the Antichrist will evidently be placed in the temple at Jerusalem. And I believe it is the abomination of desolation to which our Lord referred when he said, 
in Matthew 24, 15, "...when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand." Now, I'm not going to turn to these scriptures, but Daniel 12, 11, 11, 31, 9, 27. I have all of these in my book, by the way, on Revelation. And I hope you have our book of Daniel because you're going to find it very helpful at this point. And this is the abomination of desolation that is to appear. And what it is, we can't be dogmatic, but we believe it'll be that image of Antichrist, the first one.